Selamat pagi Cik Ira, saya Dr. Eng Katanya sebab apa Cik datang ke diri hari ini ya Sampai kerja, um, sebenarnya saya dah <coughs> Saya dah batuk, dah lebih kurang masa dah jumpa bulan dah Lepas tu, um, kadang-kadang saya saya akan <coughs> Akan lagi sam- serak-serak And then, um, bila saya makan, ada susah nak telan Bila saya makan, and then uh, Kadang-kadang saya rasa macam ada benda sikat kat dekat saya Bisa tak kenapa ya betul macam tu? Hmm, I rasa Cik mungkin ada dari job yang dia reflux Cik pada ada masa ni ke? Oh, tak pernah Laryngopharynx is the point where the pharynx divides anteriorly into the larynx and posteriorly into the esophagus. And there are two esophageous mixtures, which are the lower and upper esophageous mixtures. When there's a dysfunction of these mixtures, it causes the acidic and not acidic contents of the gastric to travel back out, and this is called reflux. Laryngopharynx reflux can often be confused with gastroesophageal reflux disease. However, there are differences between these two. In GERD, it is because of the backflow of gastric contents into the esophagus, and it is due to the lower esophageal mixture dysfunction. It usually occurs at night when you are lying down, and it presents with a heartburn. However, for laryngopharynx reflux, it is when the backflow reaches the laryngopharynx, and this is due to the lower and upper esophageal mixture dysfunction, and it usually occurs during the day. The complications of laryngopharyngeal reflux towards children are subglottic stenosis, contact granuloma, eustachian tube dysfunction, and middle ear effusion. Complications towards the adult are vocal foot scar, chronic inflammation leading to cancer, asthma, and chronic bronchitis, and also chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Examination. The reflux symptom index is a validated questionnaire to determine the likelihood of positive result of the diagnosis. RSI greater than 13 is correlated with a high likelihood of reflux pathology. It is a non-item questionnaire given to patients to score the severity of their symptoms on a scale of 0 to 5 while 5 being the most severe. Laryngoscopy can be performed as well as video laryngotroboscope. The reflux finding score is an objective measure that takes into account a score of more than 7 indicates LPR. This is the reflux finding score sheet. It is an item evaluation with a total score of 26. And on the right hand side, there is a score that you have to choose based on the severity of the findings. So number first item is on subglottic edema. The first picture shows that there is absence of subglottic edema and picture number 2 shows presence of subglottic edema when we give a score of 2. Next item is on ventricular obturation. The third picture shows that the ventricle can be seen nicely so there is absence of ventricular obturation. The fourth picture shows partial ventricular obturation with a score of 2. The last picture shows complete ventricular obturation with a score of 4. Now we move on to erythema. Pitch number 1 shows there is no erythema of the larynx. Pitch number 2 shows that the erythema is only at the retinal, so the score is 2. Pitch number 3 shows that the erythema is diffuse, so the score is 4. Next is the severity of vocal for edema. Pitch number 1 shows that vocal for is graded 1 when ventricle is partially obliterated. Pitch number 2 shows that vocal for is graded at least 2 when ventricle is completely obliterated. Pitch number 3 shows severe vocal for edema with a score of 3. And the last picture shows polypoid type edema, which is the most severe with a score of 4. Now we move on to diffuse laryngeal edema. Pitch number 1 shows there is no diffuse laryngeal edema. Pitch number 2 shows mild diffuse laryngeal edema with a score of 1. Pitch number 3 shows moderate diffuse laryngeal edema with a score of 2. Pitch number 4 shows severe diffuse laryngeal edema with a score of 3. The last picture shows obstructing diffuse laryngeal edema with a score of 4. Next item is on posterior commercial hypertrophy. Pitch number 1 shows there is no posterior commercial hypertrophy. Pitch number 2 shows mild posterior commercial hypertrophy with a score of 1. Pitch number 3 shows moderate posterior hypertrophy. Commish hypertrophy with a score of 2. The last picture shows severe posterior commish hypertrophy with a score of 3. Now we move on to granuloma and the endolaryngeal mucus. The first picture shows presence of granuloma, so the score is 2. And the second picture shows presence of the endolaryngeal mucus, so the score is 2. Investigations. The gold standard for diagnosing LPR is 24 hours multi channel intraluminal impedance and pH manometry. Other than that, barium solo, esophagoscopy, or OGDS can be used as a supplement investigation. For the management, first line treatment we give enter acid 10 ml on night and pentaprazole, which is proton pump inhibitor, 40 mg BD half an hour before largest meal of the day for two months. Second line treatment is esomeprazole, also PPI. 40 mg and enter and sit 10 ml after meals. We also suggest the patient to do some lifetime modifications such as loose weight, dietary control, smoking cessation, and uh, alcohol cessation.